how to put a Vago bugnet device into use. At the beginning we explained which components are used for this. In this example we are using the 750-8212 with a bugnet license. We have explained how to activate this license on the controller in the linked video. If they do not have a license available, you can still proceed as you will have a 30 day evaluation period. Basically, all second generation PFC 200s can be used in the future, as well as the devices in the compatibility list found in the BACnet configurator manual. So that we can use BACnet on the controller, this service must be started. For this, we change to the web based management of the controller and navigate here to Field Bus BACnet Configuration. Here we activate the service which is available after restart. As software, we need a BACnet configurator on the one hand and a cockpit on the other hand. In the BACnet configurator, we have to adjust the back stack before using it for the first time. We start the configurator and navigate to Extras BACnet Settings. Via Edit, we get to the input mask. At Adapter, we have to select the network card which is used to access our BACnet device. Now we have select the IP address of our computer at IP address. After everything has been confirmed, the backstack is restart after query. In eCockpit, we add the controller to our project. Now we enter the IP address under the settings tab of the controller and give our controller a name. This name should be correspond to the bugnet device name. Afterwards, we let scan the controller. Now all modules are scanned and can be taken over into the project with the button Apply All. In preparation, we still need the BACnet plugin. This can be installed via update and add-ons. We also need the Vagosys BACnet library, which we integrate into our project using the library manager. Now that all components are ready to use, we stay and start any cockpit. In the network view, we can select our controller with a double click and navigate to its modules. At this point we have the possibility to give names to the channels. These will be used in the future caused by the BACnet configurator as object names for the generated BACnet objects. If the name is started with an underscore, this is taken over in the configurator as the object name without underscore. If no underscore is used, the configurator inserts the slot and channel numbering as a prefix followed by the assigned name. It should be noted that the name must be IEC 61131 complaint. Now that we have saved the project in our project folder, we navigate to the BACnet tab. With a click on the button the configurator opens with the import IO configuration window. At the first start, if there is no project in the directory yet, we are asked to create a BACnet configurator project. The name of the eCockpit project is used. Then a new device must be created via create new device. At each further start of the controller, the corresponding controller will be displayed. However, this only works if the name of the controller in a cockpit is the same as in the configurator. Now a device ID must be assigned, which may only exist once in the network. Now you can select modules you want using the usual options. At this point we also find the names given before in the control configuration as designation for the new BACnet object to be created. With pressed control key Single positions can be selected in this list. Control plus the key A make that everything is selected. If you want to avoid that the not selected data points are created, this hook must be deselected at the next opening. For the objects to be created, function blocks are generated in one of the three characteristics, small, medium or large. These differ in the extent of the contained backnet properties. Which properties are included in which version can be found in the application node. With a right click on the selected positions, we add the data points 
in the desired characteristic and confirm with OK. Now we would like to create a few more values. To do this, right click in the tree view on the left and select Add Objects. In this window we select the object type Analog Value, give it a name and select the value Medium. If you don't know exactly which characteristic you need, you can see how the checkboxes in front of the properties change by selecting the different characteristics in the right window. We stay with Medium and confirm this window with OK. The further possibilities of this window will be explained in a later video. With the button Sync to eCockpit and Store and Download, we can finish the configuration in the Bugnet configurator. Back in eCockpit, we see that a folder Bugnet has been created, which contains the previously selected data points. If the GVLs insert there are underlined in red, this is because of the missing library that we include at the beginning. The linking of the variables from the PLC configuration is done in the program Bagnet HV Mapping. Therefore this must still be added to the PLC PRG or called via the task configuration. We find the created analog values in the folder Bagnet Objects in the GVL Bagnet Analog Value Objects. Then we go to the PLC PRG and insert analog value with the property R present value by using F2. Afterwards, a variable is assigned and created via the declaration window. In this example, we show the cyclic writing of the present value. If you want to write only on a value, change or priority control, you can use the code example for the application node Vagosus Bagnet. In the control configuration, it can be seen that variables have been entered here for the individual channels. If the names were not assigned before, variable names are entered in the control configuration for the individual channels. Finally, we check the configuration by a simple I.O. check. To do this, we can connect to the controller, switch to the configurator and activate our first digital output here as a test. The result should be visible in the cockpit and on the hardware being used.